Happy Friday, everybody. Let's get right into this. Talk about the contest. It is the end of the week. Let's see the results. We've got uh, basically somebody throwing in the towel. They want to restart. It's not me. Guess who? It's the roster. But, of course, make sure before we get to any of that, make sure you are following us over here on Facebook, Instagram. We're having a whole lot of fun. If you want to see all the behind-the-scenes stuff, see my place, what we're doing here, hit us up there on Instagram and, of course, here on YouTube is the main source. But... If you want to have a fantastic weekend and smash it on Monday, make sure you hit that like button right now so you can have an amazing, amazing weekend and help us out. Likes are free, and I appreciate and love each and every one of you guys for doing that. We are going to cover the trade day today. Today was a very interesting one to learn from. You're really going to get a lot from today. Today was one of those slower days in the that we've had a lot of volatility, but all of a sudden Friday, things got really slow. You're going to learn a lot from watching me trade that live, seeing wait times and how I'm thinking through things. I think you're going to get a whole lot from that. Let's get right into those. I'm going to cover trades that I did here today end to end, and we're going to cover the week kind of in a glance here tonight. So a lot to cover. Let's right into that right now. Alrighty, then. let's come on down here into our trading results windows. I would say if you are new with us, or even if you're in our crew, man, go check out the results from our members. Remember, our members come in here and they post their entire performance reports. So scroll through those here over the weekend. You guys just absolutely crushed it. I'm super proud of Foos Pro John. I mean, he crushed 7K yesterday, 3K today, over $10,000 in the two-day time period, beating me and Ross um, handedly. So I am so proud of our members there. And let's talk about some of of uh, the results. So you guys saw the thumbnail, I'm sure. So contest results. So what's going on here? Yo, brief synopsis. If you missed uh, day one, I recommend you go back and check out day one because I really talked a lot of details about what happens when you're starting with a small account. And this is the whole goal is to show you guys what I do, how I operate with it. And honestly, I think that's what Ross is supposed to be trying to do with his members as well is to say, hey, here's how you, here's how if I had to start all over and start with a small account and where you are, here's how you should trade this, right? Unfortunately, you know, he's doing things like this right here that I got to kind of put, you know, a big red star on that he was using, you know, a leveraged account. And he literally says in his seven things that you should not do as a, as a starter with a small account, you should not do these seven things. And one of them is leverage and he ends up going with leverage. So again, I mean, maybe he can explain it on his own. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter to me. We're just here, you know, to, to show our results on ours. On the other hand, um, we're using no leverage and I'm just doing exactly what I tell you guys to do. We start with a $2,500 account. I think Ross maybe stepped up to the plate. He usually does $500 accounts, as you guys have seen in the past. But, you know, he knew he was going to get into this contest with me, I guess. And he heard about the $2,500. So he's like, oh, I'll do $2,500. But then he leveraged. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to call him a cheater or anything. But, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? You think that's okay? Telling your members not to do it and then, you know, leverage up. So technically speaking, this it didn't even start at a $2,500 account. At 7X, I calculated this out. This means that he was starting with $17,500 in his account folks if i started with that like i mean just go watch what i normally do okay um nonetheless and here are here are kind of the the final results you guys are smart people i'll let you look at that but uh, maybe calculating percentages you might be like me i might need a calculator for this one so i did the calculations on his seventeen thousand, and so with his profits at 1900 that he finished out the week he was uh plus 11 percent on that we are at 210 percent folks this is the difference 11%, 210%. But folks, I know that, oh, okay, that's it's okay. You know, it's, it's still good. He did this. Let me also explain another thing. From a perspective of taxes, if you don't know about the advantages in trading futures and E-minis on the tax front, okay, I'm saving like an additional 20 to 30% on my taxes trading futures. And if you don't know about those, again, we've got a whole section on the left-hand side in our Discord chat that talks about the 21 E-mini advantages. So go check that out. So, you know, overall, we, we really, I mean, this is not just a small defeat, okay? This is, we smashed them, absolutely smashed them. So my ending account balance at the end of the week here, 7,700. Uh, he's at 4,400 there in, in his account, you know, after starting there with the, the leverage. Again, he didn't, I don't know what his drawdowns were. I didn't look specifically on what his drawdowns were. Um, you can see our stats end to end. We'll kind of show you those here tonight as well. And we'll, uh, we'll go through all the details from my entire week as well as today. Now, what's the plan on the future here as we go into the rest of the contest? So Ross has punched the reset button. If you guys go watch and look at his thumbnail, um, I would encourage you guys after you watch this video, go watch him so you can kind of catch up with what he's saying and let it, hear it from him. So you're not, you know, getting it third hand or second hand from me to tell you. But a 
essentially here is what he's doing. That 4,400 that he started with there or finished with at the end of the week there, he's not starting back over with 2,500, but he just now, for some reason, again, I know he has his reasons, okay? I don't know what they are, but he's gonna start here at 4,400 restart with no leverage this time okay so because i think he actually kind of got trolled by his own members and they said hey for us you know you told us not to do leverage so can you do this without leverage and show us what that would be like so he is again i'm glad that he's going to do that as an educator i really do think you should be able to do what you're telling your students to do so that's good okay so we'll see how things start with next week i am not going to go 4400 i am going to restart again at 2500 so i am going to take my withdrawal and get my account back down to 2500 over the weekend that should be initiated on monday morning by the time i start trading um by monday morning that will have initiated and i'll be back at 2500 so i will start again and we'll see how this goes okay if you guys have any questions on what we're doing with that so ross is going to be starting with 4400 not leveraged i will be starting at 2500 again not leveraged and we'll you know we'll press forward and we'll keep you guys up to date on uh, on, on the rest of that competition. Super excited to be able to do that. Um, you know, and another one thing that I wanna ask about is what do you guys think about offshore brokers? Like, how do you guys feel? I get very nervous about it, I'll be honest. I'm just gonna give my opinion. I don't wanna, you know, tell you guys where you stand, but you know, how do you guys, has anybody done offshore brokers? Are you comfortable with that? Tell me your experience with offshore brokers. Is there a good one out there that you guys use? Um, you know, if you've used the one that Ross is using, is that okay? Do you? Is there any problem exchanging, getting your funds back or anything like that? Because I just hear, I have heard a lot of nightmare stories of stuff when you all of a sudden you send things offshore and you know, you're, you're not gonna get it back again. Um, then again, they probably don't expect you to because most traders, as Ross always says, 95% of traders fail. And I mean, I don't see his members doing very well. Um, but then again, maybe, maybe they are. Okay, so let's get back into what are our members doing and what are we doing? Let's go over some results here. We'll start from today and then we'll do the summary of the week, if that's okay with you guys. So this is kind of where my um, my ticket starts. Let's look at my, my summary results. Of okay, here we go. So today Today ended with $675, ending the week with $52.46, that's after commissions and fees. And here are my day four results. So after commissions and fees from today, from um, the six, we're at uh, five, six, so commissions were $108, right there, profit factor 2.5. So winners, 2.5 times the size of my losers. Small drawdown, that looks good, 57% profitable. You know, not a bad day, not a fantastic day. Uh, looks like I couldn't get shorts to really work too well for me. Uh, minus 100 bucks there and, uh, you know, the rest coming out of the long. So there are the overall stats from today. So if you're, you know, wanting to know just where we, where did we start? My members beat me pretty much all over the place, um, including Ross. I mean, my members just absolutely smash it. Go, go and check those out in our room there. And again, our room is 100% open to the public and free. Um, again, just, I'm, I'm not trying to ding on Ross, but I'm just saying ours is open, theirs is not. And they don't have a two week free trial, we do. And by the way, that two week free trial can be extended for a month, two months. You just tell me how long you need to feel comfortable with the system and we'll get you hooked up. All right, so yes, we stand undefeated. Super excited about that. Uh, we beat Macro Hedge, if you guys remember that. I think I'm gonna do a recap back to remind everybody on Sunday of how we also beat Macro Hedge back, um, was that a year and a half ago? Smash Macro Hedge. They were the, the largest kids on the street out there on Twitter uh, back in 2019. And, uh, you know, they talked to the wrong people. And next thing you know, they decided they wanted to get in a competition with us. And we, we smashed them so hard their mom felt it. You know what I'm saying? So our team got together and had some fun <laughs> with some graphics. And by our team, I don't mean these aren't like paid crew members. These are people who are actually paid members in our crew. And they're just contributing. Again, great community. Hilarious put together some really fun graphics here. Um, <laughs> there's here's some Duke Nukem action. If, if anybody knows any of those Duke Nukem references, you're really gonna appreciate what we're about to, uh, to show here uh, in just a moment. We had, had a little fun with um, some of our uh, graphics and there's, <laughs> There's us hugging out Ross in uh, in week one where he's he's doing a full account reset. Uh, somebody uh, put my face on the uh, the old Duke Nukem there. Next thing you know, we've got uh, Duke Nukem with Warrior Trading. There's Macro Hedge over there, and that ultimately turns into uh, this right here. And um, weird, you know what? And to, and and 
and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. And if you guys don't know the reference, well, then it's because you're not a cool gamer like I am. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, vote in the comments. Who do you think should be next on our list? Um, we defeated Macro Hedge. We did Warrior Trading. These guys we actually exposed as a scam. I I wouldn't necessarily put Ross in the category of scam um, at, at this time. You know, people have been insinuating that he's riding into the coattails of his members and selling into them. I'm not going to you know make that. I don't have evidence of that, but I have you know seen. But oh, Ian, this for sure scam, scam, scam. We exposed them and destroyed them. Uh, wasn't even close. We'll do that. Um, contest result if you guys are new with us or weren't here back in 2019 didn't see that whole contest thing go down um, them trying to dox me and my family and everything else you know that was some saga and some drama we won't spend a lot of time into that but I will just show hey the results Algobox if you're trying to make a decision on whether or not you want to join in with Algobox and our crew you know you probably want to know about some of the history of, of the things that we've been in and you know some of our some of our big wins um, probably something you want to know about. Okay, so for today, our results, how did we get there? So we started out the morning. Here is, remember this screenshot comes from my largest time frames, which there are two. We call them the tide and the wave, right? We want to, it's the, the concept of water. So we want to go with the rising tide or the falling tide. The wave, yes, we can actually ride a wave. So just because the tide is rising, if the wave is coming down, we can ride that. We just want to make sure that there's kind of a two step. We got step one, step two. One is called the tide, one is called the wave. And we want to make sure that we've got you know each of those for each market so the way this is divided out into those quadrants we've got um, in each quadrant we have two charts for each one so we made some commentation there on the morning I would recommend going back and watching the video on how we assess the higher time frame and now we zoom into again this is a screenshot of all four of our instruments there is an instrument in each of these corners each of those is divided up into three charts the main one that we start with that we talked about in the morning are these Navy charts right here um, across the left hand side. This is where we make our decision on direction right here off of one single chart. We choose the bias of the direction right here. This is what we call the Mac V filter. We filter, we pass through this direction and we enter in off of two time frame algo bars. These are not time bars. These are not tick bars. These are customized algo bars. If you guys haven't seen them again, you can go download the two week free trial. These really help you to see patterns, etc. Here we were pointing out that right now everything was pretty much we were looking green, right? Right? You notice that I didn't have any wins on, on my shorts, on my stats earlier that I just showed you guys. But we started out right here. This probably could have told that whole story right here. I just started out the day as I had circled these going, okay, look, green pretty much across the board on the histogram at the time that I'm starting to trade. This wasn't morning. I did trade the afternoon session. So take that as a note when I said slow. And for Friday mornings are typically we want to have early in, early out, and I want to be done. However, I could not do that with my schedule today and my kids. You know, I got three kids. I got a pregnant wife and just things. Life gets in the way it happens. But that's the beautiful part of the freedom the Algobox gives you. We don't really care what time of day that we sit down. We know what session that we're looking into. And then we just sit down and we play the video game inside of Algobox and let the Algobox cheat do all the work for us. So here's me showing up that we are making our long or short decision based off of the left hand side of the chart. And then again, filtering through and we're entering in. If a trade is coming off of this chart up here, I am looking for 15 to 25 ticks. If it's coming off of this chart right here for one of our setups um, that is going to be a 10 and a 15 tick target generally unless it is the ES in which case we can go as low as a six tick target one and a about a 12 tick for target two okay all right uh, if you guys have questions on any of that stuff again go through our training program that was me walking through that during that session so I want to go ahead and mention that because we did have time to talk about that in live so here was my first trade of uh, of the session whoops Okay, so here's my first trade of the session. Getting in here, we got lots of red dots here. Now, remember, we showed earlier, uh, most of this was green, right? So I had already said, hey, if this doesn't work out absolutely immediately, I know that I'm bailing on this, but I wanted to take a little shot, you know, a little shot at this. It looked like there was a spot down here that I could do it. And this one ended up not working out. Closed out the trade for a minus 130 bucks. Um, it did not go all the way back to my stop, but I literally pressed the close button as I just saw that this thing this thing ain't going anywhere. So again, pretty much lackluster, minus $130 on the first trade. There's, there you can see that over here on the right. Now mind you, some people have asked, oh hey, how are you entering, Vinny? So, you know, some people who are new with us, these are the buttons we're entering in on. It looks like, oh, well, that's a bunch of buttons, Vinny. I don't know about if I can, uh, you know, deal with all that. Well, let me eliminate some of those, okay? These, 
right here, we don't even use those. We literally use four buttons here most of the time. Now, if I'm exiting, you'll see me bid ask, but you don't really have to. This really boils down to four things. We're buy, we're sell, we're reverse, or we're close. That's it. All right. And our targeting, all of our targets kick out for us because we use something called ATMs that's built into Ninja Trader. So if you're new with this, again, we got a lot of people coming in, you know, after watching the Ross thing go down, you want to know how we do our stuff and like, oh, well, how is it that our members have such great results? How is that possible? Because we're playing it like a video game and we're clicking buttons, okay? And our stops and our targets are already there. Um, you know, Ross, he doesn't trade with stops. He just manually exits. Um, ours, we actually have bracketed hard stops um, in the market. So uh, another little advantage for, for our system here. So I was pointing out my reasoning for going, okay, so we are starting to see on the YM, we're getting some histogram shift. This was the second touch of red into the histogram. It was shifted red here and we had a red dot coming in. So I was looking for a break of this green dot that I really was looking for a red, wanted the red, I had a red right here, but I needed my final chart to give me a red right here. And I was talking through how we can use an HMD, which if you don't know what that is, again, go watch video number one on our website for HMD entry setup. This is a break of a green dot and on the break side, we can take that as a red entry as long as I've got other reasons to get in. I'm not gonna take that by itself, but with the combination of this and this, and I had a red PRZ, but the green dot told me I can't get short unless it broke. So I was waiting for it to break, really wanted to take that one. The market was so slow, I had so much time to mark all this stuff up, never really got it So on the YM. So I look down though, and I see RTY. Remember that RTY trade I was just in a minute ago that I stopped out on? or not, it stopped out, but I closed out for a minus 130. Now I'm getting in slightly larger because I see this time it's kind of the same trade, but now I've got an additional red dot and it's not just a dark red. This is a bright red dot right here. So this is a multi dot, double dot, plus look at the king timing lines. If you're not familiar with their king timing lines, there's a pink and a green right there. There's our other one. Remember the pink lines are the king. Okay, here are kings here. If you're trying to figure out, you know, how do you read through our charts? These are the timings, and this is when you can catch distribution. Okay, this is the best time. You know, look, accumulation, everybody knows that accumulation distribution. I don't say everybody, but if you studied the markets for any time, you know how accumulation distribution works. And that is going to time the distribution. It's how we are able to get such pinpoint entry locations, small, um, small stops, you know, and big targets. Okay, so here was that break. So I did get the break of the green dot. You see that little dot right there? The dot is right there. And as the price breaks underneath it, I am looking to get short, okay? Now, I kind of front ran that by a tick, as you can see, if you zoom in there. And you'll see that basically I didn't make too much off of this. I did get target one out of this trade, but you know, still wasn't, wasn't a super great trade and the speed was horrid, but it was after king timing. And I had red, 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 enough reasons for me to go ahead and let's, get, let's, let's give this one a shot. Okay, it's only my second trade at the time, so I was like, let's take a shot. Uh, we also had the RTY open, so I'm showing here, I had two trades open at this time, because I opened up this one right here on that red dot that we just talked about, and then there's the break. And you can see that was starting to drop down, and we did get target one on the YM. RTY also hit target one. So two trades right there, hitting target one, but did not, I mentioned that right here. Um, but when they pop back up after hitting target one with the minus 130, I end up only plus $15 after three trades, right? Because technically there was two right there that were open plus my one before. I'm at three trades right now and I'm only at $15. Again, very small, slow, tough session right here at the beginning. But again, no big deal. It doesn't, we're, we don't, we don't let it, you know, get to us like that. It's, it can be bothersome, but I'm just saying like it's, we, we, get to, we get used to you know slow market conditions like we had at that time. Now this, I was making a note in the room and I would recommend going back and checking and watching the video how I was measuring this out, but teaching you guys how to um, do what I'm doing when I'm trying to estimate when I need to be ready. That king timing line, this is how I've, uh, you know, why I kind of originally invented this uh, methodology of going, okay, I've, I need something out there in front of me, right? in real time and into the future that will tell me when and where. I used to, 
uh, you know, early in my career, like probably everybody else, like, you know, preemptively jump into things, right? Getting into early, taking too much heat and all that. This is how I eliminated my necessity to have additional heat or really any heat. I mean, we really eliminate a lot, a lot of heat by waiting for large and king timing lines. So I can estimate right there that, okay, if you're zooming in right there, I know it might be hard to see on y'all screens right there. I'm trying to zoom in for you as much as I can there. But you can see that there's about five or six bars of algal bar space there between where the current price is and that pink line right there. So I know that I've got time to wait. Over here, I'm not anywhere near a pink line. So again, I'm like on the ES, it's like, yeah, well, I can wait for this. But when it gets over there, I've got this red PRZ. But rather than just enter in right now where the, it could start to move and wiggle and you know put all kinds of heat and pressure and the time, I know that the distribution is going to come right here off of that pink line. I wanna show you an example right here. You see that pink line? You see how that, this price just takes off after that pink line right there? Okay, we have the biggest turns and stuff just like that. And you'll notice there's a nice pivot, almost pinpoint on that line. Again, those are not drawn in hindsight. These are literally drawn um, in advance uh, automatically by our system. So very, very powerful to be figuring out how those king timing lines work. If you guys have questions that go and watch the videos on this stuff. It's extremely important. So that was a concept where we talked about waiting on king timings and estimating the count of bars. We mentioned that in the video and I do recommend you go watch that in real time. Looking at the two moons and seeing the 100 tick opportunity. So I see these two moons on NQ. We've got a big moon. We got a well, big moon coming in on the ES and that's a king timing line. If you zoom right in there, you will see that is a king timing line right there. So I said, man, this could be a really cool opportunity here if we catch this. Remember each bar here on these is going to be, oh, this one was, this is 24. Sorry, I thought that was the, the, the tide. This is the wave chart, so sorry about that. This is actually 24s. <laughs> well, I kind of screwed the pooch on that, didn't I? So I was talking about like, you know, one or two bars of that, that's gonna be 100 ticks. This is actually more like a 50 tick, 50 to 75 tick. So if I'm being technical on it, however, right here, we also had king timing. You see this? So we know that a distribution or a shift could come right here on that timing line in the moon, also giving us that, that we're gonna maybe accumulate here and even a single bar level of accumulation, in this case on a 24, that's gonna be at least 25 ticks up and down. And if it was on an 89, we're looking for literally 90 ticks, right? That's that 100. Uh, tick opportunity now this one was on the tide over here so this is huge right this is the 100 ticker over here on nq but at the time i can't trade nq why because i'm trading a small account and this is a thousand dollars a contract we talked about that in video one of this trading contest so go back and watch um, day one where I'm talking about before we get into this small account stuff the rules for and uh, uh, the rules for engagement in this in this war and battle for the uh, the drawbacks of having to deal with the small account it's much easier to trade a larger account um, for all the reasons that we talked about in that video all right fourth trade entry short on a power dot double dot but immediately met with a green all right so I'm getting in short right here look at that we got a pink dot plus a red so again another double dot shot and then almost immediately as I get into it a green dot shows up, so uh, rough. And yeah, I wanna say something I noticed later after I'm watching this back and critiquing myself and looking, going, <laughs> all I had to do, folks, like I tell you guys, and most of the time I do do this, usually time I'm very, very good at this, is going, hey, just don't go against the MACV, right? I could have just basically just kind of skipped on this and be like, nope, I'm still looking for a long. I mean, yeah, it might, it might give you a few ticks, but I'm looking for a green, um, on this so I end up closing this one out as a scratch trade I don't even count this trade because I literally as soon as that shows I mean I wasn't in the trade for 30 seconds and the market was extremely slow so this wasn't like 30 seconds of market open we're talking about and it's probably even less than that it's probably like 15 or 20 seconds and I see that coming up oh, nope okay closing it I don't even count that as my fourth trade now if you don't have our trade tracker this is what I've got sitting here on my desk you can go into our little side section over there and print your own we have that there for you so if you want to print one of these out and use your own set this was back in the day when I used to use nerf darts uh, nerf dart discs and of course now I'm using uh, golden trump coins and uh, yeah all we do is win <laughs> hashtag winning uh, let's see fourth trade long Double dots, so, okay, so I scratched on this one and I didn't count it as my fourth. Again, this is how we track how many trades we're on visually. So I'm on a fourth trade. I know I've got two more shots here in the gun. So which trade do we take here? So, oh, so now I end up going long, but there was more than just that dot going on there. So we had, we knew we had MACV going. We had a headshot show up on the eights. See that number one right there? Now I've got a headshot green coming in here on this. We've got the histogram 
uh, green and again I know that's a red vertical right there but if you go watch our MACD videos you know what that means that is still in the gray area so we are going with the histogram green histogram green dots on king timing plus I had audio box clicking okay and if you haven't heard audio box before you need to come into our chat room over here on the left just hang out here in the e-mini trade floor and you'll be hearing the aggressiveness of the buyers and sellers um, and only the big guys you're gonna hear the big guys we know that they are size and speed and just it's hard to explain what that is go watch one of our videos on the Flowmaster audio box and you'll see um, what that was so getting long right there then as I'm getting in can you notice I'm only in two contracts here Okay, but notice all of a sudden I'm now in four because what do we get? A blue power dot shows up, baby. Yes, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna want to jump in um, some additional contracts on that. So I got green headshot over there, adding on the blue. So basically adding to position. Now we get another. We got a green dot that shows up right after it. So now we're really starting to step. And I walk through all this in there. There's a lot of other stuff going on. You want to go back and watch at least if you didn't watch any other part of the video, go back and watch for me trade number three and four. I think there's a big shift in there that you need to see. Okay, um, this was the biggest trade, and we start hitting targets on on that. Take some off. Then I add again as a, as a cross shows up. So you notice I'm at five, but I took, I'd already hit uh, two contracts. So then I'm adding back and now I'm back at five contracts and looking for that cross of that high of day right there as we start to get that big delta coming in too, showing us, you know, as it's building, we can literally visually see that starting to come in and build. And no, that's not volume. If you guys want to go and study our delta, this is flow master delta, not anything that you guys have ever seen before. You may think you have, but this is different and I actually wish that I just hadn't named it Delta. There is a component of Delta in it, which is why I named it that originally, but I'm kicking myself. I wish I could come up with a better name at the time. So we're living with it. It's all right. Close the trade on the King timing line with a boost and that gets me to $590. What did I mean by that? Holding out to, most people have never seen this before. Most people know about, okay, I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold my, hold my, uh, I'm going to hold my, trade out to that level right there when it gets to that level i'm going to close it out we all know the horizontal level garbage okay um now again it can work out of time so i don't want to say it's complete garbage but what you've probably never seen is holding out for one of these all right so when the price is coming up like you're not going up to this i'm like no i'm gonna hold it through that level and i'm gonna wait until we hit a vertical because i know that after a vertical I might start to get that shift right there and that's going to be my ideal exit location and sure enough i mean i basically exit as this is pushing into a high spot right there on that and again i do encourage you guys to get in the habit of doing that exiting you can enter on kings and if you're pushing and your trade is continuing to move and you see if you're looking for an exit somewhere you're trying to hold out your runner a great place to hold that out to is a king timing line and oftentimes even on that king line you'll see an additional explosion through so it really gives you the opportunity to maximize your winners which we focus on in the final 40 days of your training here in our program and again remember our training program is 120 days and you can start that for free unlike Ross and any other group out there quite frankly because we just know we're the best and I don't know we can't really say we're the best because I mean who knows there may be some other but you know what we can't find any better and we're encouraging you to try to find somebody better and send them our way and we'll do a little competition with them um, we ain't scared all right so I'm on one trade left I'm kind of joking around the room about like all right I got one one shot in the gun left here we go so what do I end up going for? It's I'm I think I'm pushing to like right at 60 minutes. I got one trade left in the gun. I take this plover. So if you don't know what a plover is, um, you know, go watch the plover video. We talk about that in the trade. There it is up there. I kind of circled it. So I am in four contracts. I think I started out with two. I went ahead and added a couple more. Just trying to get something out of this final little trade. I'm running out of time on my clock. You guys know we only trade for 60 to 90 minutes. All right, <laughs> somehow I lost my place there on Discord. And so there's that plover up top. And so I'm getting in long there. This will be the final trade of the day right there. You can guys go, you guys can go watch that one. So we went from, if you don't know the plover, we went from, this was gold in color. Whoops, yeah, 
right? It tells me, hey, I'm looking for it, and then boom, when she turns red, that's supposed to be your exit on the plover. I held it for a few more ticks, and because I thought, man, surely it was gonna push right at the high, and it just it just grinded there, and, uh, and it just I was like, okay, I'm out of time. It was 64 minutes at that time, and then we just kind of went into some training after that. So again, super uh, helpful if you guys watched today's video. I think you're gonna get a lot out of it, and um, if not, hey, it's okay. Drop us a thumbs down on it, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget to smash that like button so you can have a fantastic weekend, and so you can smash some huge profits it's on Monday and hopefully hang out with us. Make sure you know, enable those notifications. Sometimes people miss out on doing that bell thing. Make sure you do that and I will catch you guys on Monday. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbot, Mod Squad, Curtis G, and the rest of the gang, listen to the Big H Town. See ya!